Welcome back here to Mountain Connections. My next guest is a two-time company founder. He now spends his time doing business coaching with Sequoia Coaching Group, and you know him if you're a regular watcher of this show. His name is Mr. Chris Coquella. How are you doing today, sir? Really well, Diego. How are you? Excellent. Always a pleasure to have you on, and today's right, topic is a really important one for all business owners, whether you are in product development or whether you're offering a service, and that's market fit. Yes. And why is it such an important thing for all businesses to get this right? Well, fundamentally, a business is about providing the best product and service to customers so that they're happy, right? So Absolutely. that their problems are, are fully served. And in order to achieve that, you got to make sure that you're serving the right market or that your product is being delivered to the right market. But it seems like common sense, but, but a lot of businesses actually tend to get this wrong or maybe not all the way wrong, but kind of miss the mark just slightly. Yeah, what often happens is we come out with an idea, a new product or a new service or even an existing one, and we seek a little bit of validation. Uh, we ask friends and family, we even go a little bit further than that, and we, we stop and we think we have the right fit and we proceed. Mm -hmm. And it's in that area where that excitement and passion is going to carry us forward, but is also going to create a little bit of a blind spot. And if we head off in that wrong direction, it may take a while to find out, but ultimately, which, which is interesting because I, I think for someone entering the market or for someone creating a, a product or service, excitement and passion to them is probably the two most fundamental things to creating that, right? And so, but, but you have to harness that in a, in a logical and sound way. You can't just let loose and, and no reins or anything like that. You have to kind of rein it back in and understand who your product is going to be serving, what that market is, and, and that is the key to it there. So having excitement and passion is, is key, but being able to kind of be reasonable about that is, is also important as well, correct? Yes, it's very much a balance. You can't give up your passion and excitement for the business or the product that you're creating. That carries you and, and, and your team forward. At the same time, we need to balance that with facts and obsess over our customers' problems so that we're always attentive to how to solve that in the best way possible to leave them delighted. I like how you say obsess, really making it a, a goal to really the fundamental of your mission should be to obsess and to fact find to figure out the very best market for your product, right? Or, or to hone your product into a market in which it's going. And so to kind of create a culture inside of your business is, is a kind of a key thing as well. Yeah, that is, that, that is a key thing. Building that into daily routines and to the norms of a team to always be obsessing about the customer's problem and the customer's situation and not obsessing about the solution per se because the solution will come out of a definition of the problem. And is that one of the most common mistakes that you see is, is focusing on the solution, uh, kind of the, the ends justifying the means rather than the other way around? Y yes, it is common. And you hear this from angel investors, venture capitalists, you know, business advisors, that people focus on the, prob on the solution, they get excited about that, and they leave behind this obsession over the problem, and they, they lose sight of what the customer really needs. That's fantastic. And, and it seems, I mean, as entrepreneurs, we're excited people, right? And, and when you figure out that you have a solution maybe to a problem, you get even more excited and you That's can't right. wait to bring that product or service to market. But doing a little bit of extra research on the front end on the problem may actually help you hone your solution down even better. Yes, and that increases the likelihood that you're going to be successful. And one of the things we advocate quite a bit is to do one-on-one uh, -on -one open-ended interviews mm. with potential customers. Let them describe their world, the emotional attachment to their problem. If we feed them the problem, they will, you know, they will just tell us that we have it. Yeah. But rather turn that around, and, and that takes a little bit of skill uh, and time to hone. That's fantastic. So what can businesses do uh, as a whole to kind of create this culture, as you're saying, to create these norms inside, internally inside of their organization to make sure that their, their product fit and market fit is, is correct? Well, it really needs to start with leadership and work all the way down and in bring that into the cadence and the rhythm of team meetings and language. So how we talk about uh, making decisions or going forward or meeting our numbers, whatever that might be, uh, bringing the language of the customer into those meetings and establishing that as just a, a regular habit. I like that you say that bringing the language, incorporating that language into the business is, is a very important thing there. And, and this is really the kind of the factor, the deciding factor between a, a successful business, a really successful business and one who maybe is, is just kind of floating by. 
Yeah, it can make the difference uh, in whether or not a new product is going to make it or taking a, a business, an operating business now, and moving that needle to make it you know, significantly above average. Any other suggestions for any entrepreneurs or, or businesses in general trying to get their product or service into the correct market? Well, again, it's really obsessing about, about the problem, uh, spending so much time on the problem that as you're collecting information, uh, you, you know it really well, and as soon as the information stops adding value, then leap forward and, and deliver something, build something. So go through a build, measure, and learn uh, iterative loop uh, th throughout the product cycle. Excellent. And Chris, where can people learn more about your business coaching and, and maybe also get in contact with you to, to get some consulting of their own? Yeah, sequoiagroup.co is our website. And then uh, my LinkedIn profile, Chris Coquella, LinkedIn is the best place. Excellent, Chris. Thank you so much. Thank Always you, great Diego. tips. And you can find out more at sequoiagroup.co. Again, the focus is on the problem, not the solution. We get excited to deliver those solutions, but we have to focus on the problem. That is the reason for the solution. Again, you can find out more information at sequoiagroup.co. Thanks again to our good friend, Mr. Chris Coquella. We'll be right back with much more right here on Mountain Connect. Thank you.